What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we'll be looking at the authorization step of the RMF. But before we do that, a free way to support the channel is by subscribing to help the channel grow. Also, do remember to like and hit the notification bell to get notified when new videos are uploaded. All right, let's get started. What is the purpose of the authorization step or the authorized step of the RMF? Looking at page 88 of NIST Special Publication 837 Revision 2, 3.6 Authorize. The purpose of the authorized step is to provide organizational accountability by requiring a senior management official to determine if the security and privacy risk, including supply chain risk, to organizational operations and assets, individuals, other organization, or the nation based on the operation of a system or the use of common controls is acceptable. The authorized tax. Table 7 provides a summary of tax and expected outcomes for the RMF authorized step. So looking at the tax, we have tax R-1, authorization package. An authorization package is developed for submission to the authorizing official. And then it says tax R2, risk analysis and determination. A risk determination by the authorizing official that reflects the risk management strategy, including risk tolerance, is rendered. Tax R3, risk response. Risk responses for determined risks are provided. That is, whatever responses you're going to be taking, is it are you going to be accepting the risk or you're going to be mitigating the risk? Whatever response you're going to be taking, especially when you are mitigating the risk, you have to provide a poem. And then the poem is going to be what? The plan of action and milestone. You're going to document all your milestone to mitigate this risk in the plan of action and milestone. Tax R4, authorization decision. The authorization for the system or the control or the common control is approved or denied. So the authorization for the system or the common controls is approved or denied. So now all the document presented to the authorizing official will be reviewed and then either the uh, ATO gets approved or denied. Tax R5 authorization reporting. Authorization decision, significant vulnerabilities and risk are reported to organizational officials. So whoever is going to be the system owner, the system stakeholder, whoever has a stake in the system will get a notification, be it uh, the ATO is approved or denied. Moving on. The document produced from the security control assessment step, that is the security assessment report or the SAR, and the plan of action, the milestone, the poem, in addition to the SSP, system security plan, and the system's executive summary of the ATO memo, make up the authorization package. In this step, the authorizing official, or the AO, will sign the system's authority to operate, that is ATO, based on its review of the authorization package, that is the SAR, the POEM, the SSP, and the system's executive summary, or what is known as the ATO memo. If no major deficiencies are found, the AO, or the authorizing official, will authorize the system to go live for three years. Otherwise, if there are severe weaknesses identified, the system will receive a denied ATO, or the DATO. That is, if your system has a lot of security issues, based on the assessment, the authorizing official will deny the system authority to operate within the federal environment. In some cases, the authorizing official or the AO will issue an interim ATO, that's the IATO, when he deems there are insignificant issues that needs to be corrected within a short time period. So let's say, for instance, you have a finding within the security assessment report or the SAR, but this finding is not a, a major finding. It's not a finding that has a high risk or impact potential. So now the authorizing official has a decision to make. He's probably going to give you the authority to operate and then start using the system within the government or the federal network. But then again, you have a short time period to fix this vulnerability so you can come in and get a full-blown ATO. The system must undergo another round of assessment 
and reauthorization after the three year span elapsed or when a major upgrade or changes are made to the system, whichever comes first, or the system is subjected to ongoing authorization. Waivers. Waivers are used to ask for temporary approval for non-compliance or deviation with the policy requirement. That is seeking time extension to fix a non-significant weakness discovered uh, during the testing. And this is tracked in a plan of action and milestone. So when you have your SAR or the security assessment report, and there are some issues that will be will be placed on the poem and then this issue might affect your ability to get an ATO so therefore you have to request a waiver to get a time extension to fix these vulnerabilities waivers are usually six months to one year additional time requested to enable the team to fix vulnerability so you can request an extension from six months to a year in order for you to have ample time to do your vulnerability remediation. But if you need something more than that, you know, after the first one year or the six months, depending on the, depending on the agency's uh, policy, if it is six months period, you get your first six months. And if you think you cannot fix the vulnerability or you cannot be done within that six months, you can request another six month extension on your waiver. Exceptions are requested when the weakness uncovered during the testing cannot be fixed or remediated due to what lack of personnel or resources or the system or technology limitation or the cost to fix the problems outweighs any potential risk and the impact that this risk might impose on the system. Therefore, in, in situations like this, you can request to get an exception in order to uh, uh, avoid working on these vulnerabilities. Sometimes it might break the system when you try to do an upgrade from a lower version to a higher version. Because of the type of technology you have within your environment, if you do an upgrade to a newer version, it might break some functionalities. In that case, you can request an exception. These are simply circumstances beyond the control of the system team and the stakeholders. So that is operational requirement. So whenever you have an operational requirement that assists or uh, a vulnerability cannot be fixed or fixing that vulnerability will introduce more and greater harm to the system than the, uh, the vulnerability, then you can request an exception in order to avoid you know, dealing with this vulnerability. Uh, this has to go through some uh, approval processes, you know, acquiring some top, top level signatures in order for you to get an exception so that you can, your system can live with a vulnerability within the federal environment. Again, both waivers and exceptions are typically approved by authorizing official who signs the ATO. And this is pretty much what the uh, authorized step of the RMF is talking about. Main takeaway points here are you have to know what the uh, authorization packages are. You know, so the authorization packages are again the security assessment report, the plan of action and milestone or the poem, and then we have the what system security plan, the SSP, and the systems executive summary or the ATU memo. That's going to, you know, detail exactly what happened and, you know, what the system is all about. So the authorizing official will get a, a, a like a high level overview of the system, read the system and then read the security assessment report as well as the plan of action and milestone and the SSP. These are the key takeaway points here. And you have to know what the waivers are used for and what exceptions are used for and what is the difference between an, uh, a DATO, denied ATO or interim ATO and in what circumstances do you get an interim ATO and in what circumstances do you get a full ATO and in what circumstances do you get uh, a, 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 a denial ATO or the interim ATO. So these are some of the things that you have to take note of you know, in the authorized step. All right guys, so this is a pretty short and straightforward video about the authorized step of the RMF. If you find this video useful, do like, share, and subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. 
please do comment below and let me know your thought on this video also let me know what topic you would like to see a video on all right guys i'll see you in the next video